Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. After a seriously brisk start to the day, it looks set that it's going to clear up now and stay clear right the way through to dawn with any luck. So I'm going to make the most of tonight and hopefully do a part two to my recent DSLR versus one shot colour video. So for tonight's session, I'm going to aim to use the refractor as I think that's worth investigation with this rather than just staying constantly with the Newtonian telescope. Um, I'm going to have a reread through all the comments that were left for me just to get them fresh in my mind while I make a plan of how to approach tonight's session and I think we'll largely go from there. I'm going to go ahead now and get the telescope straight out and let it start to cool because with any luck it's going to be clear by the time it reaches darkness. Well, everything's up and running now. I've had a full reread of all the comments that were left for me and there were a lot of really constructive stuff there. So thank you very much indeed for sharing all your thoughts. I think there are a few points that were worth adding my own uh, commentary back to. So I think I'll go ahead and do that right now. So the first point is the seeing. Some people thought that that could have been a contributing factor to the difference in uh, star quality at the very least, aside from the rest of the comparison. and. Uh, while that could be an explanation in some cases, I'm just not satisfied that it's the case in this particular one, um, and we'll touch upon that now. So after taking a good look at the last few exposures from the end of the DSLR session and the first few exposures from the start of the one-shot colour session, it was an immediate degradation as soon as I changed the cameras. Now all these frames were taken within like a half an hour of one another, so there's really no chance that unless so extremely turbulent air from rolled in right at the exact moment that I switched the cameras that this is the factor that caused so much more blurring. I would say as well another thing that kind of throws this argument out a bit is the seeing um, usually affects your guiding quite, uh, quite directly so usually when the scene is very steady your guiding graph is also equally steady and arguably the scene would have gotten better looking at the guiding graph throughout the night because it did actually get better when I switched to the one shot colour. Um, but still it could be that that happened, you know stranger things have happened at sea so uh, I'm not completely closed off to the possibility that that's what happened but I just don't think it is in this case. Another good point that was raised uh, as a possibility was the elevation of the target causing a, a mismatch in seeing conditions as the lower the target is of course the more thickness of air column that you're looking through in terms of the, uh, the depth of the atmosphere. So again while that could have been a factor I think that there was only maybe 10 degrees of elevation right between the, uh, the sessions right from the start of the DSLR to the end of the one shot colour session so um, Again, I don't think it's going to make that much difference, at least not in my experience, and especially not shooting long wavelengths through a narrowband filter like this. Uh, they're much less affected by seeing conditions than standard LRGB or simply unfiltered shooting is. Once again though, this would usually be a very gradual change that you'd notice throughout the night. You may start shooting something at a low elevation in the sky and notice it's quite blurry, wishy-washy. And then as it gets high up, you'll notice, hey, these are notably clearer sub-exposures, but it certainly doesn't happen over the course of a half an hour. It's Again, it's a much more gradual thing. So another comment mentioned that the quantum efficiency being so much higher on the one-shot colour camera could have acted almost against it in terms of keeping those stars sharp and tight by, it used to be called blooming effectively, but nearly every camera these days has an anti-blooming gate. But I think what the meaning is that potentially the brightest stars could have kind of spilled over and blown out a little bit and I can sort of see what they're talking about but I think the nail in that one's coffin is that the smaller stars which are absolutely nowhere near saturation also suffered from this same blurring effect so it was across the board just worse on the one shot colour for some reason. I, I'm still expecting it's probably down to some sort of in camera processing at this point. I just want to say again, of course, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to offer your thoughts and perspectives on things. It's been uh, very interesting to read them and I have taken things on board that I think I can apply to this current experiment which is happening right now. We'll touch upon that in a moment. So I've decided to remove another potential variable and that's the each camera's response to the L Extreme filter. And I'm going to do that by shooting unfiltered with both cameras for this session. 
Now another potential variable could have been the performance of the scope throughout the night. Maybe it wasn't consistent or perhaps there was some form of dewing that I didn't see happening on the primary or the secondary mirror, even though I do have a fan on the primary all night long uh, running, keeping it at ambient so it can't drop below the dew point. Uh, and also a heater on the secondary mirror, so it shouldn't have done anything like that, but it certainly could have done if the conditions allowed. Um, to go one step further tonight, I've decided to run this whole test on my refractor, which is an extremely high quality telescope. It certainly can't be called into question the quality of the optics on that thing. And it's also extremely stable in terms of dew. I've never had it dew over once in some extremely, extremely bad conditions when everything else is just dripping around it. So another variable that I've tried to nail down a little bit is the target selection for tonight. So. I've gone after the Iris Nebula. I've already got the DSLR started and running in this case, and I've chose the Iris because it's a broadband target, which is gonna fit my shooting style tonight, unfiltered, uh, and it's extremely well elevated all night long. So there's not really much chance that atmospheric variance is gonna have too much uh, of an effect, at least in terms of object elevation for one of a better explanation. Finally, uh, another step I'm going to take to try and reduce the amount of atmospheric variance that could become a factor in this experiment is I'm simply going to reduce the amount of time that each camera is on the telescope. So the DSLR is going to get an hour of exposure time and so is the one shot colour. It's going to be split up into 32 minute exposures ideally. I know there'll be some overheads due to divering and perhaps refocusing because it's set to autofocus every single degree of change but basically this should be about as accurate as it can be without having to buy two exact uh, complete setups to run this experiment with which is just as we all know completely unrealistic so as to the rest of the methodology for this experiment if you'll accept me calling it that um it's basically all going to remain the same as i happen to think it was quite sound on the whole um so we'll just see how this one turns out i will be keeping the iso and the gain settings i'm using for the respective cameras at the same as they were before because i don't think it'd be realistic to try and change them and make them match one another because that's simply not how you'd use these cameras you'd use them at the best settings and that's what i'm going to do Anyway, if you can't tell by the fact that I'm wearing this big silly sheepskin jacket, it's absolutely freezing out here now and I've had enough. So I want to go inside for a while and warm up and just keep an eye on this experiment. So I'll catch up with you all in a little while. So I've just gone outside now and swapped the cameras over. I've currently got the DSLR down here capped and taking some matching dark frames at this current temperature at two minute exposures each. Um, as I said, I've just swapped to the one shot color that's currently doing an autofocus and just about to start its first exposure. Um, in total, this is probably taking about 12 to 15 minutes all in. I did rush and get it done as fast as I possibly could to minimize any potential atmospheric change happening in this uh, fraction of time in between the uh, the two sessions well I'm happy to say the image capture is now finished with a one-shot color camera so we've got a full set of data to be stacked and compared for both cameras at this point so just looking at the exposures as they came in on the screen between the two cameras I've been monitoring them all night long basically it looks like this could be a much more valid comparison than the original one was where I think use of the L Extreme may have masked some of the noise performance from either camera and this might be a more plain comparison, we'll have to see. Anyway, I'm going to continue on shooting and just enjoy the rest of this clear night now if we don't get too many of them at this time of the year so uh, the next time we speak it'll be back at the computer and we can start comparing that data. Well, we're a few days on now, everything's stacked up, calibrated and ready for comparison. I've chosen to leave the two images at the native scales rather than scaling the larger of the two images, the one shot colour, down to match the slightly lower pixel scale of the DSLR or larger pixel scale should I say, as it does indeed have physically larger pixels. Uh, I've chosen to leave them as they are because I think that's more representative of how you'd actually use the camera in practice. So. Without any further ado, let's get to this comparison. So looking at the overview of both images, uh, both set to a one fifth size, you can hopefully see that there's 
well there's certainly more signal in these darker areas on the one shot color image than in the dslr so if we just zoom in a little bit and we can check things out at one to one scale now now i don't know how well this will be coming across uh through youtube because i know that it does compress uh my videos down no matter seemingly what i do i'd probably have to render these in 4k to get a better comparison but Hopefully you can see in these background areas, there's still a level of mottling evident in the one shot color images that just kind of isn't there so much in the one shot color. I'll zoom in a little bit further and hopefully this should become uh, more apparent even through compression. Now, um, one thing I'm noticing straight away here is that at least over on the one shot color image, let's take this star for example here and, and this is the same one on the DSLR. You'll notice it's got a neighboring star right there and a couple more over further to the right hand side of the nebula and these just simply haven't been detected by the DSLR. Now if it's not detecting bright point sources like stars then we certainly can't expect it to detect faint pieces of nebula that's giving off far fewer photons per second than those stars will be per pixel and uh, I think that is kind of what we're expecting to see at this point. So the rosette comparison was very confusing and I couldn't quite put my finger on what had gone wrong. And even after reading all the comments, nothing really stuck out in my mind as a, a viable explanation as to what exactly had happened. So I think I'm gonna have to just put it more down to user error at this point. It's more, it seems more likely that I have done something wrong uh, and made the test invalid but at least in this case it seems like it's all gone well and it's certainly open to be uh, interpreted however you like now but i think if i zoom in a little bit further you can see uh thanks to that slightly finer sampling rate of those smaller pixels on the one shot color we've got a clean split on this little double star here but it almost just looks like one smudged star on the one shot color image if you can see where i'm uh, referencing here while they're all both at four to one view Think interesting to note also uh, is that these mild, well, I say mild, um, very faintly contrasted dust uh, lanes in this brighter part of the Iris Nebula here. Hopefully, you can see that there's one there, uh, there's one there, and there's a third one there. They're quite a bit more difficult to make out in the one shot color image, and I think that's just due to the inclusion of all that extra noise. Uh, it's certainly much more apparent at least to my eye now um, on this test that between the two the one shot color is now the sharper um, and also by far the less noisy image again like I did for the first test I will be making these available to anybody who's interested to check them out I'll provide these masters um, just I'll just upload them to the Google Drive which I'll link to in the description but um, I'm still hoping that this is coming across well on video. Uh, I think all I can really draw from this at this point, especially looking down here at these little star clusters and how much better resolved they are, is that something simply went wrong during that first rosette test that I just didn't pick up on. So that's, uh, that's on me. Um, hopefully this has become a more valid test. I mean, I'm not saying by any means that the DSLR image is ugly because simply it's not it's, it's exceeded my expectations by far it's made quite a pretty image overall given just one hour of data from uh, bottle seven skies it's really up against it for this type of target it is indeed a very faint one and it's a challenging target to capture even at the best of times never mind in the conditions that i captured it in but um it's done really well especially given the price point and the age difference between these two cameras I know that you may think that perhaps uh, this is a pointless comparison to make, but I just thought that it was valid because it may be a reasonable upgrade path that some people are considering. You might have a modified DSLR and be wondering, is it worth making the leap to a cooled one-shot colour? And, you know, looking at this, hopefully you could draw your own conclusions, but I think, yes, it would be if you're interested in getting the best images possible from your skies. Um, and I think that's really all i've got to say on the matter so uh i hope that you've enjoyed seeing this comparison please do feel free to download and color calibrate this data check it out yourself and see what you think um as i've said i'll make this all available to you so 
with that said i hope that you've enjoyed looking at this comparison with me and again i thank you all very much indeed for all the suggestions and pointers that you left that i've been able to put into practice some of them on this repeat test and i think get a much more conclusive result so uh, with that thank you very much indeed for watching as always a huge thank you goes out to all my youtube channel members and the support that you guys give i can't thank you enough even though i do try but still <laughs> i just want you to know that it's very much appreciated so with that said now until next time clear skies <laughs>